Hello and welcome. Today we're looking inside of the meat machine to see what's available. I'm Oscar Beckler. This is the file that I put on Gumroad. Thank you for buying it if you buy it. And let's take a look at what's going on in this a strange, a strange file. First off, you'll note that it has like some stuff set up as a preview, but you can largely assume that you're going to go forward and delete all this. Uh, here it is with materials. Here it is with rendered. <clears throat> There's sort of a psychedelic background that I just set up in the world material. And, uh, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, there's also uh, a little bit of animation. So if you play this, a lot of these are set so that they animate. And you can see over here, most of these use the trim end feature, which is inside of the uh, meat machine modifier. have some stuff I still have to change on this so you know again it's a it's a rough release but it used to be called boner and I changed it to meat machine so it would be slightly less uh, uh, I, I envisioned people deciding this looks cool but I'm not gonna buy it because the name is boner but I thought it was funny but changing the name to meat machine so what else is going on here? There's a couple of files. Let's take a look through the scene collection. Down here, there's this empty, and this is just something that I use at the world origin for mirroring. Uh, don't worry about that. There's this cube here, and this is just a two meter cube uh, fresh out of the ad menu. And I like having this in my scene set to wire, especially if I'm just freestyling and making a character, which is what you can do with the meat machine. And I just like this as a two meter guide. So I set it to wire and uh, oftentimes I'll have it so you can't even select it, um, <clears throat> but it's just a guide because two meters is about Chewbacca tall. So if you're making a tall character, you can go for that. Usually you'll end up uh, keeping it slightly below that, but it's a nice little shorthand for what you're going to deal with. Anyways, we don't care about those. Uh, we have a render collection, and this just has several things in it, such as cameras, lights. There's a plane down here, which is a shadow catcher so if you go to this material I think under its settings I don't remember where they keep this stuff uh, transparent shadows I think it's that but uh, where is this in the object ah. anyway it's a shadow catcher it makes it look like it's on the floor you know then you have this title group this has all these little files that I used to make the <clears throat> the text, the utility collections group just has some stuff like uh, this teeth upper and teeth lower are some collections that I use sometimes when I'm using the spine version because you can have it reference a collection and choose objects from inside of that. So you can just have it choose which tooth you want and it'll sort of randomly create a line of teeth for you. We also have this fake VDM example. I, I want to make some more of these, especially like, you know, if I can hit, you know, 20 sales of this file, I'll make some more VDMs. Uh, there's also basic objects, but uh, these are things that you reference sometimes when you're doing it. Uh, the presets collection is a real important one. And this is where you see the major forms of how I have this file set up. So nine times out of 10, the way I like to work with this is I just grab one of these that is kind of close. So let's say I like, uh, <clears throat> I want to make some muscles and this is the muscle one, it's pretty cool. So I would just clone this with shift V, use alt S, R and G to clear out its transform. Now you'll see that it's got these nice clear transforms. And then I would start working on this over here. So maybe now I go over here and I start making muscles. Beautiful. We'll get into how these are different in just a minute. Then something that's kind of fun is there's this example folder where I've put together a couple of these. Some of these have <clears throat> been deleted. You can find them in older versions. That's because, you know, as I was testing this, sometimes I would make a character and then I would forget about him, go forward, change a bunch of the settings in the geometry new uh, tree. And then I would go back to it and it's 
doesn't work anymore. So some of them I threw out. But for instance, this Greyhound is probably my most up-to-date example. Again, there's a little time-lapse video that I put up that shows me making this. And it took about 30 minutes to make this guy. And it was really pr pretty damn cool for 30 minutes of work, right? There's also uh, this little centaur. You can see he's too big. Some of these are just like live demos that I was doing. But this cartoon face is a nice example of how you can use these curves to make these really big kind of swooping decisions about thickness and character with relatively little de uh, detail. And that's really what I'm going for with this is I want to be able to make big obvious choices that have like swooping ideas but with the most non-destructive interface I can, which is the curves modifier, or uh, curves. So I really love using curves and using Alt-S to scale the VA points and Control-T to twist them. And I can do a lot with just something kind of simple for this. You know? <coughs> so that's what this file is, is just several examples of how to use those. There's also this blob girl. I think she is kind of a, a messy implementation as of right now. It's probably one of those ones I should redo. But she's mostly an example of the blob subtype for boner and meat machine. This file is so heavy now. So for any given thing like this, it's weird. Oh, the settings on here. That's weird. I'm uh, diving into this a little early, but. Computers getting a little old. What else do we got? Oh yeah, this fake BDM one. It's just an example of the BDM getting put to use. So here I can generate noses wherever I put them. Now this is an example of one where. Uh, you know, this manual mirror, I think I have to clean up. There's reasons for it, which is based around some of the ones where if it's on the line of symmetry, you might want that to be a curve where <coughs> it's united. But most of the time, what I do these days is a mirror modifier. And the question that you run into is, do you want the mirror modifier before or after? And usually you want before because of the way curved data types work in geometry nodes. So if I put it before, uh, I can use a different geometry node to make it back into curves uh, because when it mirrors it, it suddenly starts thinking of it as mesh data. I don't want that. Uh, but the problem is if you convert it back into curves, a lot of times what you end up with is um, it loses a lot of the curve information like the twist and the rotation. Usually, I want the mirror second. Uh, what else is in here? It's this Goro example that's kind of like Goro from uh, what is it, Mortal Kombat. You can see, I think this one is slightly broken. It's supposed to be feet bones. So I probably need to go in here and change this. Much better. Can I go through 
enter and change all these modifiers everywhere. Uh, this head example, this one is also just a nice use case of uh, the blob setting, but actually it's one where, uh, <coughs> I think I have uh, this in one of my uh, demo videos. But this was using the blob preset and what it, you know, again, this is really for sculpting workflows. So um, I used the blob to um, get all these kind of into the right place. And from here, I can start just focusing on actually sculpting it. But I've got all the separate blobs that I tend to prefer for my sculpting workflow. And that's really what this, uh, this whole project is all about is how to sculpt in a way that I think is a little more fun, a little more uh, artist friendly and a little more focused on um, good results in the block in phase and quick results in the block in phase so that you can get on to the fancy high detail sculpting later. So let's take a look at some of these uh, presets. Let's go through these based on um, one by one how I think they work. Actually, let's go through the modifier first. So over here, we have the meat machine, formerly called Boner. And <coughs> there's uh, several panels that you can go through. Usually what you're going to have is this first type choice. So you choose blob, line, chain, sheet, muscle, fake medium, fleshy type. Uh, what is that? Fleshy spine. Ooh. And then you can see that there's only so many panels. So usually what you end up doing is you choose something like sheet muscle. And then the only panel you need to worry about from then on is the sheet muscle panel. So uh, it's sort of a one modifier to rule them all. But you can then go into these sub panels and choose individual uh, choices about them. Uh, so mostly this primary stuff uh, category and the material category are the ones that kind of affect everything and then all these other ones are kind of separate so uh, that's what you gotta worry about uh, oh yeah this is to go with the uh, spine bone so this one was originally a line and let's take a look at some of these starting off with this guy I'm gonna hit isolate on this. So what you see here in the primary stuff is a couple of starting attributes. Again, this is just a curve under the hood. And so I can add more if I want. And again, every time I add one of these, I sometimes use Alt S or Control T to twist it. The first attributes here are the trim. This is what I animated on uh, that Anubis character. You can see it's just a you know the data is right there, so you might as well have it something that you can trim. The circle or square profile lets you switch to a square profile, and this is one of the things I, I love about this setup is um, if you go down a little bit, you can have the x and y thickness separate. So you know most of the time you're going to want to leave these at one because they're a multiplier on this, but you can have something like a muscle that is you know, broader than it is tall. And I kind of love that. Uh, the spline length influence is something where when this is set to one, if you if you draw a small spline, it's going to have a small radius. If I draw a big one, it's going to have a bigger radius. Oh, I think I have this reverse right now. So uh, this will make it so that teeny spines, teeny lines. Big lines, big, thick muscles. This primary radius is the main one you're going to uh, want to work with. So a lot of times if I'm working on a project with this as my new block in tool, I'll start by duplicating something. And I might have a version of this that is instead starting off with a uh, smaller primary radius. So if this one's going to be small or big, maybe this one's my tiny one, and this is my medium one, and then I might have one more. 
where this one's gonna be my, my thick one. And so depending on what starting influence I want, I might choose this object or this object or this object to add new spine, uh, splines. But at the same time, every time I add these, I, I can always override this with Alt S. So sometimes you can just use one and see how far it gets you. If it's bugging you though, have separate multiple objects. The curve profile, this is just a series of uh, curve profiles that you can mess with. I want to maybe have some tools that I add later for, you know, just throwing some math on this so that it's a little more slider based rather than official set based. But usually this covers the major reasons that you would want this or that profile. And once again, What's nice is I'll hit A to select none, and then B to select one N. And you can always just manually scale one or two of these. You can even subdivide them. If you want something in the middle, it's like a third separate one. So although this is like a very specific uh, profile, this one has so many custom Alt S radii for its Bezier points that it's totally different now. <coughs> this count or length resolution. And when you turn this uh, res X uh, with the, this count length resolution on or off, it's determining whether you want this to be something where the length of the curve determines its resolution. And in that case, you're going to use this res x length base. But if you have this off, instead you're going to use this count based one. So depending on if you want it to be uh, based on the length of the splines or based on a specific count, you can switch between these. And when you do that, it's going to switch between which of these two sliders affects it. Uh, this uh, straighten attribute is something that I have specifically for muscles. A lot of times muscles, um, let me see. muscles tend to have an origin and an insertion and they are a rubber band that stretches between them and it's a taut rubber band and a muscle can only do one thing which is contract which brings those two points together. And this isn't a 100% uh, solution. So for instance, you have muscles that wrap around a form and so it's like a rubber band that is wrapping around something. <coughs> but uh, that's where this straighten tool comes in. Um, a lot of these are things where, yeah. So what this does is it'll make it um, have that sort of rubber band tautness. So a lot of times if you're just going to town on this and back to taper both. So if you are drawing and you're like, whoosh, but you want each one of these to be like from point A to point B, this will make it so that it's always that like straight line vibe. And you leave it at like 50%, maybe there's a little bit. What about this res y? Uh, this is determining, you can see if I set this down to three. Um, it's duplicating whatever you set. So if you set the resolution to three, it's actually setting the resolution to six. And this is because of um, some things I do regarding um, index counting. So basically for under the hood reasons, I always want this to be an even number. So whatever you set it to, here, you can set it to if I force it, but I never want this to be like three or five. And again, X and Y thickness lets you control these individually. The material just has a couple of preset ones that I've made. So I think there's just this uh, skin, a muscle one, a bone one. 
The muscle one is using a UV unwrap in, that you can find in the geometry notes here. By the way, feel free to buy this just to look around inside of the notes. I, I do that all the time. I love buying people's geometry notes, toys, specifically to crib notes off of them. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Uh, the muscle one, uh, the muscle material is the only one that uses this segment and material V squish. And what this does is it changes how often the UVs repeat. So you can use this for things like, actually this kind of looks like tuna. <coughs> but it's really for something like abdomen muscles where you might want split, 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 split. And this V squish one, I'm gonna set this back to one for this V squish. Uh, what this does is it sort of pulls the uh, side materials in more. So you can use this to sort of control the blend of um, the blend of how much ends up being like sinew and tendon versus actual muscle. So somewhere around like 0.5 and 0.5. Make it be all tendon. I want to delete that and start fresh just because I made a bunch of uh, random goo on that. Let's go down to like what's inside of this one. So this would be. Uh, I don't know. I think this one might be one of the boring ones. So this one, uh, mostly the only thing that's interesting in this one, it's not using bone chains. It's not using this. So uh, this default one, you pretty much are going to stick to the primary stuff uh, tool. The one exception would be the epiphyses here. So let's take this one, you know, and try changing it into something that's more bone-like. First thing I would do, I'd probably choose bony ends as my taper. So now it's kind of thicker on the ends, kind of like a, a femur. And then from here, I'm going to change my material to the bone. By the way, I would not recommend you do this. What I would do is go over here and just select one of these presets. But it's kind of nice to go through it again. Maybe change that primary radius. Again, primary radius is the key one. Uh, let me up this count so that I have, when I'm upping that uh, count, I'm adding like segmentations along here and a lot of that is going to affect where these epiphyses emerge. So let's go down to the epiphyses. I'm going to turn both on and you can see what the heck they're ejecting out. Pointed out most of these things I hope have uh, default values. So if I delete everything it'll kind of go back to what it thinks is a default Although this probably requires a default of what are they doing? Go back to point one. So what this is doing is it's sort of um, finding where the uh, points are on the end here. <coughs> and then you can choose how far it spreads. You can uh, run a sort of soften on this if you want to make it smoother. And uh, these two attributes, epiphysis 2 or 1, are kind of uh, a little bit like voodoo uh, because they're sort of running two separate equations for um, popping out which faces to ignore. Uh, epiphysis length is going to go all the way down. Ooh, that made look like a hot dog bun. That's kind of cool. And so if you want this to have more end or less end, you can determine all these things. You can have it extrude more or less. And 
yeah, from here, you have lots of different kinds of bones. Again, it's never going to be perfect, but one of the things that I keep emphasizing is that this is just like a rapid prototype tool. So if you want, you can always just, uh, at any given time, um, just right click, convert to mesh, go into sculpt mode, start remeshing it, and then you can make your own bone from there. But if you're making 100 bones, it sure is nice to just draw them out. But once you're ready for something else, you can do something like, oh, now I'm manually sculpting my own FFICs. I don't even need the modifier anymore, Oscar. <coughs> so again, think of this as something that's a starting point for your sculpting rather than the end point. What else is under here? So yeah, that's the main examples of FFICs. Uh, what's cool as you can see here, this one is a different variety and if you turn both off, it'll turn them both off. But if you want, you can turn this on for just one side. So this lets you do things like rib bones or bones like, uh, I think your tibia, no, your fibula is like uh, bony and knobby on one end, but pointy on the other. And so you can, you can get that look. You can also do sharp teeth if you want. Uh, the next one I want to show off is this blob one because I, you know, the blob workflow is one of the first things that really appealed to me about this. I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to have that and I'll add a mirror modifier. Since I love doing this. So you can see I have this set to surface. And just like the other things I've mentioned, you can immediately Alt S on these. Uh, Control T is not going to do much. Uh, so what's nice about this one is if it's set to surface, it'll just automatically draw on the surface. So let's have some variety to this one. So I'm going to separate this one. What I've done is I hit P and separate, and now I have two separate objects with <coughs> um, their own modifiers. So on the blob, uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting, if you turn this off, you can see that it's just this wacky curve. And what ends up happening is you have this starting extrude amount, which determines how thick the average blob is. <coughs> so again, I recommend just draw one in and start off by seeing, is this too big or too little? There's also the extrude amount. So you have the extrude amount and the starting extrude, which are two separate ones. So this uh, starting extrude is like from here to here, and then the extrude amount is from here to here. And this inset is determining like uh, how this extrude is like softened compared to the starting point. So if you set this to like one and zero, it's not going to use any sort of starting extrude and it'll just be this extrude amount that determines your blob. Now this is an example that I want to show, like here we see this problem which is under the hood, this curve drew on the surface pretty successfully. Uh, but depending on what you want, you want this to be flattened or not, number one I think this is also still getting affected by straighten or maybe not uh, flat and normal so that's the one so if I set flat and normal to one you'll note that uh, this is now a little more accurate to where those uh, curves are and so what's happening here is under the hood this starts by getting this um, have this start off as a correct to this size. So it starts off by getting this initial curve. It creates a mesh circle with the same amount and fills it. It flattens it based on the normal if you flatten this normal. 
And so you can have it be something where uh, if it's something where you want this to just automatically be a single flat plane, it'll make it flat. <clears throat> and based on that, it then extrudes it out and softens it. Uh, this normal scale attribute, when it's set to 1, is very similar to the bone length attribute that I had shown previously. Now if I do a small one, you'll notice it's a certain size. And if I do a big one, it's much bigger. So you can have this normal scale be something where um, this is set to like 0.2, maybe that's more reasonable. So you can have, you can have this set to 0 and at that point, it will only use the extrude amount. And then there's the percentage modifier. Oh, I need to update that too. Yeah, I just, uh, I really enjoy this as something where if I just want to block in some sort of alien character, I can kind of do it pretty fast. This is even better with a tablet. And you know the the whole goal behind this is that it should feel like I'm playing with Play-Doh, and I think I kind of got that achieved. I like I like just sculpting this stuff in and very quickly <coughs> having it turn into the thing that I wanted it to be. So when I make these blobs, it extrudes twice. You can see that right there. And so this pinch one and pinch two determine how softened that is. have this guy. So this is a sheet muscle generator and what I love about this one is it's really good for things like uh, pec muscles where if you're trying to think of it as like you know you're being a lazy artist and you want it to go from here to here you know, from here to here and just have that you want one line to represent a whole muscle this kind of lets you do it. And so when you do that, you can go in here and under where is it? the sheet muscles, this fiber bulge does like a secondary uh, amount. This has its own separate trim uh, start and end. And so what's nice about that is you can combine those two start and end points and have like something that gets really broad from a s single point. So if I subdivide this, you have your own separate, you know, you can, you can get a lot of control for this like fanning structure. <coughs> uh, pop left and pop right are going to determine how many of these you want to remove. So if you remove all of them, it's basically turning this into a circle and uh, removing each one. I think this one also, if you go under primary, 
the X and Y really matter for this. So if you want this to be more round, you would go like that. And from there, let's see, what is it? Like if I set pop right to zero, it's basically cutting it in half, which is probably how you'd want it. And of course, Control S and Alt, or Control T and Alt S, always your hand. But just know that like the fiber bulge is like a separate one for this. Uh, there is one flaw with this one, which is you can't just draw multiple versions of it. You basically have one sheet muscle per object. So when you want another one, you have to duplicate it and start fresh. Some of these ones, like over here, this is just like a demo of that material. So this is basically just the regular curve one, but it's messing with the material to get this sort of <clears throat> abdominal look. We can actually make it even better. Of course, duplicate it and start fresh by uh, under the curve profile. If I choose accordion, I can make it even more. I just put this before and hey look we've got an abdomen something like that that's a twist Some of these other examples are examples of the spine. Actually, I want to fix this one. And, uh, what is going on here? I have a bone chain that does this. It's something that I didn't recognize. <coughs> So the chain bone has their own separate sort of uh, set of tools. Should have worked on the clone. Yeah, let's start off with this guy. So the cool thing about these is just add in spines wherever you want and then shrink them. Uh, what this is doing is it's breaking the curve up and oftentimes uh, instantiating a secondary version of this. So under bone chain, you'll see a couple things here. You can add rotate random to make all these a little off. I can also initialize with a separate rotation. So if I wanted something like that, <coughs> instant, instant bone. So it's sort of a modifier for the individual one. This use collection one is going to reference in a collection and I'm gonna turn on uh, separate children down here, which is going to make this a lot more sensible when I go to teeth. So let's do teeth upper, teeth lower. I'll have to update here. But so, here you can see what it's doing, which is it's making this into a series of teeth. So it's reaching into this collection and choosing an instance randomly. And this is just a collection full of teeth models. But you do have some amount of control over it still. So it's kind of really nice if you wanted to just go, Bloop, I'm an artist, there's my teeth. But you want to have separate children on, otherwise it's going to reference this collection over and over. Again, the scale uh, separate is kind of nice. Uh, the Y scale uses radius is going to make it so that, um, with this as an example, or I'm going to go back to my original one. With, uh, 
So under Y scale uses the radius. If I turn that off, instead of having each bone be scaled based on the individual chunks of this, instead it will be that um, it's always going to be the same length. Now by extruding this, I've changed the number of children that's going along here. So I might want to do something like what's messing me up is I'm so used to like Z being up but it's based on gene and I still want it to be like that. So you can modify just the Y. That's kind of nice because sometimes you want these to taper but you want them to still touch and so by separating these out you can differentiate between that. This does apparently nothing. There's something for me to fix. What else have we got here? Uh, these ones over here, these are basically exactly what I just showed. They're just starting points that have the teeth already made, including one that is two chains, and it's using sort of a fake tooth that is generated from the sort of spline stuff. So that's something that's interesting is when you do something like this and it's a chain bone, I think, I could be wrong, but I believe all the stuff down here for like epiphyses. So basically it's sort of a spine, it's a, it's a bone within a bone to some extent in that you can go in and still customize things like the taper or the offset Again, <coughs> this is a big one. So that uh, Y scale uses radius. But now I could go in, for instance, and choose just up here. And it's not affecting the chain taper. It's affecting, well, I think it's affecting both, actually. No, I think, uh, I think it uh, ignores this for... Uh, Stuff like this. So your curve profile instead only affects the children rather than the parent and the child. Uh, this is also technically an example of a bone chain, although it's slightly uh, messed up right now. So again, I think this is one where, oh, maybe that's all I needed to do. Turn off Y scale uses radius. So this would be a great little toy for if you wanted to have um, one of these. This is an example of where you might want to switch count length resolution. Instead have it be always the resolution of the length. And now when I extrude it, it's not going to... I don't have to worry about the chain becoming bigger and therefore all these being wrong. It's just always going to make them whatever I like. And then, yeah, there you go. Instant intestines, I guess. Yeah, what did I do? That's what the default should be. Something like that. <coughs> uh, this one over here, well, I'll get to that later. Uh, this last one is something that um, fakes VDMs. And what does that mean? Well, um, a VDM brush in sculpting, it's nice. You can make a sculpting stroke, but 
it's permanent. It throws the sculpting detail in there. You can't modify the stroke after the fact. And again, a lot of this, because the goal is a sculpting block in that's really fast. The problem with it is you end up not being able to dive into the block in from there because it's drawing specifically like full on sculpt detail. And I want those separate objects as often as possible to last. So I only have one example here, which is a nose. But the idea behind this fake BDM option, and you can see right here is where you would choose it. <clears throat> what this does is it lets you choose a collection that's going to um, get instanced in. You can reverse the curve direction. You can flip the Y. And from here, it's just nice because like for instance, if I wanted to like throw some stuff in there and just have this all be ready to go. You can use Alt S also. So uh, the other thing I like about this is you have like multiple opportunities for control. You can uh, scale it here. I think you can even, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but That might be another thing for the next version of this. BDM. Add XY. Slash multiplier. <coughs> Anyways, it lets you get these sort of block ins ready to go really fast. And, you know, anytime you think like, where would I use a BDM brush? Think of this was instead of BDM collection, and then that's what you would want to use it for. And then finally, just like you know I showed previously, it would convert this to a mesh. It selects all these individual things. I could hit P, sep uh, separate by loose parts. I can go to sculpt mode, and now I can switch between these. So, you know, just uh, it's a uh, a nice way to work because you can get the benefits of a VDM brush, but it's in a format that goes into block in stage a lot better. And then the last one is over here. This is actually from my sword temper project. I made like a sort of nasty meat sword. Let's see. And I love this one because This is under the spines one, and I'm gonna see what happens if I just delete these. How many should these go to their default format there? Obviously, this one is like kind of intense. You can do a lot of weird stuff with this. You can <coughs> rotate the piece. And what's happening is all these parameters are um, Dab myself. Ew. This is cooler than I thought it was. So this tooth length sort of determines how big the tooth is in relation to the gum. Uh, the gum indent amount is going to make the uh, proximity to the teeth more or less apparent. Uh, this meet one length, sort of determining um, how these go. That's really what I want to go. 
get down to uh I feel like I need the the gum resolution. It's gotta be a thing, right? But yes, I did just secretly add more parameters while I'm paused. Um, so you can set your resolution here for the gum. And then you might want to blur this based on that. <coughs> 64, what? 64 res. Uh, what is it? Uh, five blur. What does that give you? Something like that. a lot of this one you can definitely feel it's kind of like voodoo uh, it's basically creating this initial thing out of two cylinders that are combined and then remeshed something I do every once in a while. I'll just delete everything, see what's broken. <coughs> so this is work for me to do later, which is I think I gotta uh, go through and update a lot of the default values of these. But when I do that, let's go over here. Grab this little starty guy, and it's pretty fun. Makes me so happy. <coughs> so that just about does it for showing you what's in here and all the cool stuff you can do with it. Again, let's uh, let's talk about how you might go about making something with this. I might start like this. I'll duplicate this GSR to clear it out. Turn on my cube here as a guide. I'll maybe isolate these so I'm only working on one thing at a time. And I'm going to move this to a new example. 
And I'll call this uh, dinosaur. Which I now have to go in and turn on. And from here, right, let's start from the side view. And just think about where my dinosaur legs are. One thing you might run into is these are sometimes finicky, and the reason for that, uh, the bone epiphyses are <coughs> extruding based on um, the closest vert that is at the end of a bone chain. So, you know, I don't couldn't necessarily figure out how to make it so that the uh, they always point in the vector of whichever end they're at, and you know knows how to split from left to right. So what I did is to just find that proximity and I go away from it. So what you might find is like if it's alone, it always points in the right direction. But if it gets too close to another one, it might break. Usually it's not a big deal though. So I might do something like that as a start point. Go to the side. Go over Y and up. Shear this. Put it sideways a little bit. And then I'll go grab another one, mess with it more. So, next, I might go in here, get the next part of this guy's skeleton, which is. Looks like I have my data backwards. Oh yeah. There's the start of my dinosaur creature. So from there, I might go and grab my next component, such as a nice little spine. GSR. Alt GSR, I mean, to isolate it. I'll move this one also to the dinosaur collection. Once again, isolate this. And now, I can be an artist. Watch me go. I want this dinosaur to go. Oh. I'm just going to do that on cursor instead. There it is. So how does it see a length base? Down here under a chain, a spine. like that in place as a nice little starting point. I can then go get some sort of ribcage bone like this guy. Duplicate it, Alt GSR, move it to the dinosaur group. I'll once again isolate these. Do 
and something like that. It's wrong, so I'll reverse it. Which direction? Uh, now from the side view, I can do something like this where I get this sort of in place. I'm going to duplicate this down that far and hit Shift R a whole bunch so that it happens over and over. And now what I'll do is I'll switch to the Move tool. I'm going to turn on uh, Proportional Edit Falloff. Sometimes you need individual origin. Well, no. Go in here, fix this part. get something in place like this. And then we can start using muscles. Butt's a little more on this. <coughs> now I'll go grab a nice muscle. Uh, I sometimes start with a blob and I'll just put in some filler stuff. I'll put this in the dinosaur example again. This guy. Maybe just not grease paint this. Maybe annotate him. So I might just start with something that represents his tummy. There he goes. Good enough that when I start drawing other muscles on this, it'll stick to that. Same thing for this, maybe. Water in there. I think that might, might have been one of the water Come on, silly guy. Who's going to be in this tutorial? So you get something like that. And now, you can start doing something like, here's my example. Not my example. My presets. I'm going to go back to the presets collection. Now I'll grab this good old muscle draw. Close it out, put it in my new dinosaur example, turn off my presets. And on this one, I want this to be like my taut starting muscles that go from hip bones and stuff. So I'm going to have this straighten to one, I delete those, and now I'm going to start drawing on surface. And so now I can do stuff like this where it's automatic. It's funny because I don't even have my tablet on. And this would definitely be something that was even more fun and better with a tablet. With something like this, you can start 
Just kidding, we want to put bones and stuff in. Sometimes I'll throw one in like that, just specifically to have as like a filler. Because now when I draw more muscles, it'll land on the right spot. So this is basically the general principle behind it. Um, the other thing I'll do is uh, for something like toes. You want to go play? Yeah. Who is? Well, Felix isn't here. We gotta do it this way. Do it this way, but. No, it's not helping. Dinosaur. Turn off my food. So, this spine bone, I'm actually using as something where I'm gonna set this to a much smaller count, like 10. <clears throat> and I'm gonna have this draw on the cursor rather than the surface. But I want this actually it's probably like three, four. And I'll turn off feisty. I'll choose a more normal looking thingy. Cool for both. This is kind of instant sort of cartoony finger bone. Also, probably should be equidistant left and right. This is so much more fun to watch when it's sped up, right? But again, this is a long, this is the long form of this. But very quickly, I can do something like that to get like animal toe bones in. You can start to see how quickly you can just bash out anatomy with this. Are you talking to me? No, I'm recording. We've been recording this whole time. Just gotta catch all of Elliot's fun dabbling. That's lovely. I can't wait for him to do yet another video. Oh boy, he's gonna be on YouTube. But yeah. In my opinion, this is a just a really fun way to work. So I hope you buy Boner. I hope you uh, check it out. Oh, pardon me. I hope you buy Meat Machine and check it out. And if you make some cool stuff with it, please let me know. I want to see what you got. All right. Bye.